The February 20th, 2024 Community Resources Committee meeting will be held in hybrid format with the option for both counselors and the public to attend in person or participate remotely. The public may follow the committee's deliberations in person or by joining the virtual meeting by phone or computer. The meeting will be recorded for later broadcast and uploaded to the Northampton Government Video Archive on YouTube. Live public comment will be available using telephone, call-in, or video conference conferencing technology. Jurisdiction matters, ju jurisdiction matters affecting the community, including economic development, local business, tourism, the environment, the arts, planning, zoning, sustainability, land use, housing, and affordability, among others. Um, can we call the meeting to order and roll call? Sure. Councillor Pastridge Clemmer. Here. Councillor Perry. Here. Councillor Dobbs. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Uh, this meeting is be being audio video recorded. Um, I don't know if anyone's here, but now's the time for public comment. There's no one. Okay. So next, updates and announcements from the committee members. Does anybody have anything to say? And it's time to talk about That's on the agenda. Later. Okay. So next is uh, um, items referred to the committee, and there are none as of now. Um, so what we have on the meeting agenda for today is uh, brainstorming, since this is our first official meeting. Um, so we're going to discuss topics, community conversations, counselors may be interested in having community resources to explore, initiate independently. So um, so this is stuff that we're going to have to work on for our term here. So if anybody has any ideas or things they'd like to bring up, now's the time. Waverly? So, uh, thank you. I was thinking that it would be nice if we could have a, a format on our agenda that includes like a standing report or invitation from a report from the DNA, um, because that would be consistent with economic development, local businesses, tourism, and the arts. And I checked with the director of the DNA, Jillian Duclos, and she said that she would be interested in having that opportunity. If we afforded it to her, she would utilize it. Um, was that everything? Yes. All right, cool. I will also second it. Um, I had wanted the director of, DNA, of the DNA to come in last uh, session, but unfortunately we're not able to have that happen. So I would second that. That's very important. Um, I'm just going to give a couple ideas of things that I have. Great. Um, so I would also like to bring in Brian Foote, who is the arts and culture director, um, just to talk about some events planning. And I think that we could probably bring them both in, uh, just to save time. Uh, I also would like to have us maybe bring in someone from the youth commission mm -hmm. to deal with that. Yeah, I would like great. to have a liaison with them to see what they're thinking about, um, I also, I was talking to you about this, Debbie, um, would like to see maybe someone from a representative from Smith come. I think that when we talk about community, uh, Smith is a vital part of our community. And a lot of times it feels that they're separate from the rest of Northampton. So I think it'll go a long way uh, so in, in terms of even economic development, bringing some folks, just making them feel like they're more part of the city and hear what their um, questions or what their concerns are about the city. What kind of roles do the Smith people have? So I am uncertain who we would bring in for, you know, which which person. But, uh, yeah. So got some contacts and yeah. see. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, also, I would like to maybe schedule some some time later to have some uh, someone from the chamber whether it's Vince Jackson or someone, uh, as we prepare for the picture Main Street project to begin, I think it'd be nice to have some discussions uh, with some of our business owners and, and get on the same page and, and do that. Uh, 
And the last thing I really would like to do again, we don't have to do it th this year, but uh, I really enjoyed having our representatives, uh, Lindsay Sabadosa, come in and do a, an overview. And I also enjoyed having um, Senator Comerford come. So, oh, and sorry, I have a whole long list. And then I, I also wanted to bring in the division of community care. Mm -hmm. um, we had them come when they had an interim director, but now that they are a little further and up and running, it'd be nice to have a follow-up uh, discussion with them. Yeah, and then I met with um, Emerge um, too, so I thought we could maybe have uh, have them both on the same day too. Did you say Merge? Emerge. Emerge. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? That's, That's a great list. <laughs> Thanks for all those ideas. Uh, Jeremy? Um, yeah. Um, I had been, as, as a lot of you, as all, all of you probably know, like um, even before I was counselor, I've uh, uh, been very involved with uh, disability related issues. And um, one thing that I has been kind of a, a, a big obstacle living in Northampton for, uh, for over 20 years is that there are so many businesses that are inaccessible and and um and um it's you know the city doesn't really have involvement you know we can't force businesses to become accessible um but one thing that i think that we can do to like sort of acknowledge um you know the the disability community in our in our town is to um make some make sort of like a, an accessibility tour guide for northampton where we um, kind of put a spotlight on the places, the businesses um, that are very accessible to disabled people and kind of have like a little, like, a you know, some some suggestions on like a website or, you know, something like that for people to go um, that are accessible. And I feel like doing that would be a good way to sort of encourage other people to, you know, want to be on that list, you know, to become more accessible and, um, and then, and then I was also thinking that one thing, other, other sort of campaign we could do with that is to try to encourage other people to, um, so like, there are a lot of businesses in Northampton that have like old, you know, in, that are in old buildings that just can't become accessible and there's nothing they can do about it. So for businesses like that, I was thinking we could talk to the, have like discussions with business owners about um, how they could reach out to um, the disability community to, you know, offer assistance, you know, like if you want to use our business, um, give us a call, you know, you know and um, sort of just to like have a, a procedure that um, so if you do have a disability and you can't enter this business, you could call the business and, um, you know, they'll, they'll be aware that, you know, that, you know, you could have there'll be more communication basically um, to help out with that, because a lot of times you'll end up going to a place and realize that you can't get in and there's no way to, you know, even talk to somebody that works there, you know, just some sort of like, you know, procedure, you know, to encourage something like that. I think like all of that combined, um, you know, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of putting spotlight on the businesses that are already accessible and then, and then speaking with business owners that, that um, for places that aren't accessible and seeing what we can do to, to have more communication about that basically. Yeah, that's a great idea. And, um, you know, when we talk about it too, we, we want, you know, people, you know, you've said you've gone to places and you've gotten there and you're not able to get in. So we want to avoid that um, for people. And um, yeah, like that extra trip, you know, like, you know, avoid mm -hmm. making people take that extra trip. And um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's not to shame the people that aren't accessible because, you know, the buildings are very old in this town and they, they're just, it's, it's not. It's, yeah, like they want to be able, like, you know, I've talked to a lot of business owners that want, you know, like they, they wish that they could, you know, be more accessible. This is nothing they can do. And, you know, I feel like places like that would, would be happy to probably you know, put a sign on their door or something, you know, that says, if you need assistance, give us a call. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that'd be great, you know, and just uh, people can find ways to help you guys out, like FaceTime the business or, yeah, yeah. Like that. So, yeah, that, that'd be great. We could excited to work on that with you. Awesome. I would love that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Just a few, Just a few more. Mm -hmm. um, Northampton Neighbors, are you guys familiar with them? They're sort of tending to senior issues. 
Um, I think it would be great if we could get a representative from there. I don't know if they just want to do a one-time thing or a standing thing. Um, and also to an issue that Northampton neighbors cares about and the Disability Commission cares about that I just wanted to flag as something that we could potentially work on at some point. Um, the sidewalks getting shoveled in the winter in front of like residences and businesses. Right now, the onus is on the owner of the of the residence or the business to shovel for the most part. And that has proved to not be really effective. There's been a lot of like ice and snow um, that prevents um, elderly people and people with disabilities from being able to travel safely. And so I wanted to see if we can look into that further and um, work on that. And Northampton Neighbors is interested, as I said, in working on that. And then just one other thing, the Senior Center, um, I have heard from some of my constituents that they're really looking for the Senior Center to have more availability for rentals. I think right now it's only one day. I'm not positive about that, but whatever it is, it's been limited and um, we've heard from the city that it's sort of a staffing issue. Um, and I just wonder if we could, on behalf of our constituents, look into that more and see if there's, um, if it's practical at all for us to find a solution because people really wanna utilize that space and it's just not as available as it used to be. So to have the senior center have more days open for people to come in and... Yeah, I wonder if there's a way that we can um, just, encourage that and look into that more and see what are the barriers. Okay, thanks. Uh, anything else? Okay, well, that's a really, really great list to start us off for this term. And um, so since that's it for brainstorming, we'll move on to new business now. Is there any new business that... I keep looking for you, Jeremy, over there. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Any new business? Okay, well, if that's all, then we can... Oh, is, that, is this where I should talk about parking? Yeah. Sorry. Well, there I, is new business. Was, okay. <laughs> I mean, there's somewhere. But... Yeah. So similar to kind of trying to learn more about the, the barriers at the senior center, um, the issue has been raised by some people in the community that... Um, Many people feel that the director of the DNA should have a parking pass because they do so much work around the city that requires traveling from business to business. They set up a lot of great events for us, like the um, Winter Fest that just happened with all the ice sculptures. The director of the DNA had to drive to something like a dozen businesses, drop off blocks to hold the ice, drop off food for everyone who was sculpting, um, and so on and so forth. And I think that a preliminary discussion between um, the city and myself and President Jarrett revealed that what's difficult about it is the DNA not being technically a city mm -hmm. entity or employee. And I, you know, I raised that the contractors that we hire do get parking passes. And it was like, well, those are employees for a day. And I think that's somewhat true, but still like a 1099 contractor is not a city employee, right? So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we can um, put on our agenda at some point to try to see if we can, as a city, find like an exception or a way to allow this nonprofit that really partners with the city so much to have that accommodation um, in a way that is still comporting with whatever uh, laws might make it difficult for us to grant parking passes to non-city employees. Um, so has she try to get a parking pass through the mayor's office or the parking? Yes, yes, she did require, she did request one. So I wonder if we could look into it and see if it might be the kind of thing that we might refer to legislative committee or something. I'm not sure where the barrier is and whether it's within our jurisdiction. What was she told when she tried to get one? She was told they were just for city employees. And, so um, why her and not other people that, employees that, um, not city employees, but people that drive around and are connected to the city in some other way. Like, where would the line be that she gets it and other people don't? Well, I think it would be, like I said, that that we really partner with the DNA so much. So many of the events that are put on 
um, are put on by the DNA for the city. And so many of the um, economic development meetings happen with the DNA present. They're really like a consultant that's working with the city. I don't think it's a paid position, but um, it could be that it it's sort of like a contractor position and the pay is one parking pass or something like that. So I'm interested in seeing if we can figure out a way to make them meet the definition of someone that could get one. Um, I think they're very closely tied and playing a, an active role as sort of a leadership role of the business community and working closely with the city. Has she talked to the DNA director about buying a pass? You could purchase passes. Has she talked to it? She could purchase a pass. Yeah, I think we're looking for sort of the the courtesy and the, the acknowledgement of the business relationship between the city and the DNA, if you could call it a business relationship. But, you know, their mission is to raise um, the businesses that are feeding into our local revenue. So, yeah. yeah um, is that parking passes aren't something really that counselors oversee? And that's an executive decision by the mayor's office and the mayor? Yeah, I don't, people. I don't have the citation for where that comes from. That's why I want to look into it and see if it's something that could be within an ordinance that we deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's something that we could take on it in this department because it's just not something we oversee unless you find something else. And I think it would open it up to many other people wanting parking passes that, you know, we just the city just can't hand them out to everybody. Okay, well, I think it's good that we had this discussion so that there's a record of that. Anything else? I will move to adjourn. And second. Okay, the meeting's adjourned. Oh, we have to take a roll. Oh, oh. oh wait. Oh. Second. Councillor Pastrich Clamor. Here. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Dobbs. Yes. And Councillor Rothenberg. Yes.